So here we have product of three functions that we need to work through and the product rule extends. The original product rule just had a function times another function, but it turns out if there's a third one, you just take the derivatives one at a time and hold on to the other two. So what I have to do here then is take the derivative of three X, which is three and leave the other two functions alone. Sine of X, cosine of X, add on. Leave the first function alone, three X, take the derivative of the sine, that's cosine. And then that third function cosine just chills out for a moment. So I'm just taking derivatives one at a time and adding them up leave the other two constant. And then the last, I take the derivative of the third function and leave the other two there. So I still have a three X sine X, not touching those. And then derivative of cosine X is negative sine of X. So that is the product rule with three functions. And then we just try to clean this up as best we can. Well, certainly they all have a three, so we could factor a three out. These two, second two have an X, but the first one doesn't. We have a minus sine squared. We have a plus cosine squared. All right, so I guess I'm gonna pull the three out. And that's all I can pull out of all three. Otherwise, I don't have anything else in common. So then we have sine of X, cosine of X plus x times the cosine squared. Then we have a minus x times the sine squared. And every time I see sine and cosine squared together, I get excited. But there's a minus in between, not a plus. So that's not the Pythagorean identity. So if I did factor the x out of those two, I would get x times cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x, which should look familiar to you. Why? And actually the sine times the cosine should look familiar. This one right here, and we'll look it up to double check. This one right here is the cosine double angle formula. That is the cosine of two x. And this one right here is almost the sine double angle. The sine double angle would have had a two sine of X, cosine of X. So I'm missing the two. So that means that right there could be one half sine of two X. But let's look up those identities to make sure I'm not lying. Uh, and then the question is, is that any better than what I started with? So one version of the answer for sure is let's do this in green say this is one version of the answer here doesn't make our life much better by applying the angle double angle formula so my claim is that this right here should be equal to let's do it right three times one half sine of two X plus X cosine of two X. All right, so we need trig identity sheet. And our book has one in the appendix, unless we look that up. Um, where is it? Probably review of pre-calculus. Trig formulas, all right. Okay, double angle. <clears throat> so the sine of two X is twice sine cosine. I was missing that two right here. So I put it on the other side as a one half sine of two X. And the cosine of two X is cosine squared of X minus sine squared of X. So that one is straightforward. So yeah double angles did apply there. So this is definitely another way we can write it in red. It does use a bit less ink, so it's kind of nice, but it's got the 2x in there. And if I needed to take a second derivative at this point, I don't have a way to deal with that 2x. I would have to rewrite it in the blue method.
So it's kind of a draw as to which is the better answer. I'm going to go with the uh, the blue one highlighted in green is is, an, is a fine answer for this one. But you should always try to do a little algebra to see if you can write uh, the original one more simply. Your, your original first shot at the derivative here. And yeah, so at best I can pull a three out and the double angle thing knows when you make it a little bit better. All right. And did I forget to record that? Oh, no, I did. Ah, good. Excellent.